We live in a world full of weather, and it affects everything we do. Whether you're outside playing ball, or inside watching satellite TV, weather affects it all. Thunderstorms are one of the most exciting and fun weather phenomenons to watch, but they can also be very dangerous if you're not careful. There are two different types of thunderstorms, ordinary and severe. Ordinary thunderstorms last about one hour. They contain rain and small hail. Severe thunderstorms are the ones that you really have to worry about. They are the dangerous ones that can last several hours. They can have large hail, flash floods, or even tornadoes. Where did thunderstorms come from anyways? It's not like they just randomly come out of the blue sky. There has to be an explanation for everything. But what's the explanation for thunderstorms? Everything weather related can be tracked back to the sun. It is the source of all energy on Earth. The sun's gravitational pull keeps Earth in orbit around it, causing the four seasons. The sun's rays travel to Earth and provide plants with energy. The plants can then use that energy and provide all other organisms with energy. In this case, for thunderstorms, the sun's rays travel to Earth and hit the ground, which then heats it up. When the ground heats up, it is receiving infrared energy, or to simply put it, heat energy. The air low to the ground is heated up by the warm ground. This heat energy causes the molecules in the air to move back and forth. This puts gaps between the molecules. This means that there is less mass per square inch of the air, so the air is less dense. This heated air is lighter than the air above it, so it rises up. When the air is warm, it has more room for moisture, so it absorbs more from its surroundings. When the air stops rising, the air is much thinner, because there is not as much air weighing down on it from above. Thin air, or low pressure air, is much cooler for two reasons. There are not as many molecules in one area, so more of the sun's rays can pass through without hitting any of the molecules. Two, it is further away from the ground, which is absorbing and radiating the sun's heat. The warmer then begins to cool down and it condenses. When the air condenses, there is no longer as much room for the moisture it previously absorbed. All this extra moisture forms into water droplets, which are light enough to be held by wind. Clouds are then formed by the buildup of water particles. This cloud will continue to grow until the warm air stops rising. That is the first stage in forming a thunderstorm. There are three stages in total. The first stage is the Columbus stage, where a Columbus cloud forms. The second stage is the mature stage, where the Columbus cloud is changed into the Columbus cloud, and the actual storm begins. The final stage is the dissipating stage. This is the stage where the thunderstorm begins to disappear until it is completely gone. In the mature stage, once when the cloud gets so big, the water particles begin to join together, making large water droplets. This joining of water particles continues until the water droplets are too heavy for the cloud to hold and they fall as rain. For a normal rain shower, this is all that would happen. But for a thunderstorm, cold air will enter the cloud at the same time as the rain begins to fall. Because cold air is heavier than warm air, the cold air will fall downward, creating a downward wind, pushing the rain to the ground. This is the stage when thunder and lightning would occur in a thunderstorm. The thunderstorm lasts for about half an hour before it starts to disappear in the dissipating stage. The cool air flowing down that was pushing the rain stops the hot air from rising. No more water can get in the cloud, so the rain finishes off and the cloud disappears. The entire process of an ordinary thunderstorm is about one hour from the very start to the very end. There is still the question of where thunder and lightning really come from. And if a thunderstorm is named after lightning, then why is it called a thunderstorm, not a lightning storm? Lightning is the transfer of electrical charges from the clouds to the ground. It is the same thing as the spark that you sometimes get when you touch something. A spark happens if you are either negatively or positively charged, and you touch something that has the opposite charge as you. The electrons jump from one object to another to balance or neutralize the charge between the two objects. 
or in this case, you and the object. The spark jumps through the air millimeters before you touch the object. The noise you hear is like a miniature version of thunder. The only difference between a spark and lightning is the dangerously larger scale of lightning. On a normal day, the charges are evenly distributed throughout the cloud. However, during a thunderstorm, the negative and positive charges get separated in the cloud. The process which the charges in the cloud separate is not completely understood. What we do know is that the negative charges build up at the bottom of the cloud and the positive charges build up at the top. The bottom of the cloud is now negatively charged and it wants to neutralize itself. The positive charges in the ground are pulled towards the negative charges in the cloud. These positive charges build up at the highest place closest to the negatively charged parts of the cloud. Possible places for these positive charges to build up could be trees, poles, or even a person if they happen to be the tallest thing around. The positive charges build up in the highest place until the attraction becomes too strong and just like a spark, the charges jump through the air. The negative charges jump from the cloud and the positive charges jump from the tree. Both charges meet in the middle. Then both the cloud and the tree become neutralized. The transfer of charges happens so fast that all the human eye can pick up is a quick, bright line of light that flashes on and off. This is what we know as lightning. Now we understand where lightning comes from. But what about thunder? When lightning strikes, it creates a large amount of heat energy, causing air around it to spike to extremely hot temperatures. This air then expands rapidly creating a booming sound wave, which we know as a thunderstorm. That explains why it's called a thunderstorm and not a lightning storm. Thunder is caused by lightning. We now know how thunderstorms are created, but where are they most commonly found, and when? If we use the United States as an example, ordinary thunderstorms are most commonly found in Florida, Penicilla, and the southeast plains of Calorador. Severe thunderstorms, however, are more likely to occur in Texas and southern Minnesota. Thunderstorms can also happen at any time of the day, but it is more likely for it to happen in the afternoons and evenings, because that is when the ground is radiating the most heat from the sun. Likewise, thunderstorms can happen at any time of the year, but it is more likely for it to occur during the summer, because the air is heated more. Thunderstorms are fun to watch, and can be pretty amusing. But don't get too carried away. You don't want to overlook the dangers involved in thunderstorms. Lightning creates extremely large amounts of heat and can cause forest fires. Lightning can also shock you through your running water and electrical devices. Large winds can create large waves and lightning can strike the water at any time, making boating very dangerous during a thunderstorm. And safety is very important. Here are some tips to help ensure your safety during a thunderstorm. Seek shelter in a sturdy building. You can go into a car if it's your only option, but don't touch any of the metal on the car. Stay away from all tall, isolated objects. They may get hit by lightning and debris may fall. If you're the tallest object in the area, crouch down with your head and arms to your knees. Do not lie flat down and stay out of puddles to prevent getting struck. Do not use your tap or any electronical devices during a thunderstorm. As I mentioned before, lightning might hit a power line or the plumbing and cause huge electrical surges. Once when the lightning storm has passed, don't go outside for another half an hour. If the air could still be charged and lightning could still strike. The last tip is a no-brainer. If there are any down power lines in your area, do not go near them. Let your electrical company know about it, and they will get the professionals to take care of it. If you're one of those people who worry about thunderstorms, new affordable technology has been made available to anyone. Storm trackers add on that you can buy for your IBM computer. It takes lightning strikes and plots them on a real-time map of your area. It has a range of 300 miles so you can get an early warning of when a thunderstorm is approaching. It works by picking up radio signals that are produced when lightning strikes. 
These are actually the same radio signals that you can hear on an AM radio during a thunderstorm. There are over 40,000 thunderstorms a day worldwide. Watching thunderstorms can be a ton of fun, but make sure you do it safely. This has been Fire Planet's second educational video. Now you know all you need to know about thunderstorms and how they work.